Hi, Danielle here from Wendell Woodworks, and today I'm bringing you along into the shop with me. I'm making a wedding present using a type of wood inlay technique that uses my scroll saw and my miter saw. Honestly, I feel a little strange making a video like this because I am by no means an expert. I didn't go to school for this, and nobody taught me a special technique. It's just something that I found works for me, and hopefully by sharing it with you, it gives you an idea to build upon and inspires you to make something of your own. So let's get started. All right, whenever I do this type of inlay technique, I always start with one eighth inch backing. Now this can be found at Home Depot or Lowe's. I automatically cut to a two by four for around five or six dollars. I'm going to cut two pieces of the same size to the size of the piece that I'm working on. This is going to be my template that I've created and I'm going to go ahead and measure that and then cut this eighth inch backer to size twice. I use the table saw to cut both of these pieces to size. Now one piece I'm going to save for my backing. The second piece I'm going to go ahead and glue this template onto. I'm going to cut it on the lines that I have here and these little pieces that I cut out are going to serve as my hard template or my hard pattern for the next round of pieces that I'll be making out of palette boards and scrap pieces that I had in the shop. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Step one, we're going to attach the template using painter's tape and spray adhesive like always and then we'll take it to the saw. I know it's a bit messy here, but I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough of the next step. So I've cut out all of the pieces, and for this piece, I'm actually trying to create a mountainous effect. What I'm gonna do is lay down the wood the direction that I want on each separate piece. Today I'm using pieces that I have cut down on the table saw. These used to be pallet boards, some of them were scrap pieces. So I'm gonna be using these, and I'm going to cut them to the size that I want per piece and glue them down. After all the pieces are glued, I'm going to be taking this back to the saw and turning it over. And I'm gonna very closely follow this line to cut the piece down to the size that matches the pattern. And I'll put them all back together. If you don't have a table saw or if you don't have all this pallet board that you can run down, what you can do is use wood lath. This is what that looks like. It's very similar, but you can find this at Home Depot or Lowe's and Packs. And this is also a great option that you can go ahead and sand down and make to size as well. So I moved to my miter saw station. I brought one layer with me. This is the top layer I'm gonna be using this piece for. So I want it to lay this way at an angle. So what I'm gonna do is cut a bunch of little pieces to the size and I'm gonna use my wood glue to lay them down the way that I want all the way across this layer. So this is the first layer all glued up and I'm gonna do the same thing with the rest of the layers and I'm gonna alternate the direction of the wood and use some various types to kind of give it some different texture and some more depth as we go. Hopefully look a little bit like the Smoky Mountains. I got a layer done here, obviously a lot of scraps. When you're scrolling, it is obviously easier for the blade to cut through one layer versus two. So if you get in the groove and you'll be cutting the other way, your blade will feel some resistance. So sometimes it's easy to get it lined up and the blade naturally kind of wants to go against this backer, but it is easy to accidentally overstep. So try to be careful of that. And now that I'm done, I kind of evaluate to see where I missed the mark. And you can see it's kind of bigger right here than the template. So I can either go through and sand that down or I'm gonna just kind of correct now with the scroll saw and kind of go back and just kind of eye it and carefully try to get all of this as closely to match up as possible. And the more time I spend doing this, the better fit it's gonna be at the end. I have all the layers cut, and you know, some of them look good, but to be honest with you, I'm still disappointed with the fit of some of these, like here. Even though it looks like it 
matched up with the template. So if you have any ideas for me or advice on how I could get a better fit, please comment below. I am still learning myself, so I would love to know. I'm thinking maybe using a flush router to get it perfect might work better, but it's still gonna look good. It's still got a good rustic feel. I am gonna elevate it a little bit with some acrylic at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, sanded a bit, stain it, get it the colors that my friend asked for, and I'm gonna finish it up. And once this dries, I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna reinforce it with some pin nails. So it's in there good. Make sure all the pieces are good and make sure they don't need reinforced. But this is essentially the technique that I've done. Of course, I'm gonna frame this. I'm actually going to elevate it with some acrylic standoffs and the verse that she wanted on here. Hopefully I'll be able to get you a picture of what the final project looks like. And I also plan to do a video for those acrylic standoffs if you're interested. So this is the type of wood inlay technique that I use. Again, if you have a better idea, please share it with me. I would really love to know. And I hope that gives you guys a good building block of an idea. So thanks for watching you guys. Happy creating and I'll see you next time.